SEMrush is an online visibility, management, and content marketing SaaS platform. Today, it unites over 5 million marketers worldwide and assists them in their everyday with help of its key tools, competitive research, SEO, content marketing, social media, and advertising. SEMrush always aims to provide a product solution to all marketing experts to ease their workload. Check out their newly launched tool, Content Marketplace. Now you can order and optimize blog posts in just a few clicks to fuel your content marketing efforts. Check them out at semrush.com and thank you for sponsoring SEMrush. Hamlet's been doing SEO since the super early days back in 2002. He's done it all with the black hat side as well as doing white hat. And now he's very, very passionate about scaling SEO through technology and then also helping people automate their SEO techniques by maybe even using Excel or pseudocode. Definitely listen to this interview. I think you'll like it. Hamlet, thank you for doing this. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So we're at Tech SEO Boost. Yeah. It got dark, but it's only like 4.30 or so. And we're in the main area where there's music, but hopefully you guys can hear us okay. Uh, can you please tell people who don't know who you are, who you are? Yeah, so I'm Hamlet Batista, originally from the Dominican Republic, here live in New Jersey, and here having a great time here in Boston. I'm the CEO and founder of RankSense. You flew in from Newark? Yes. I was gonna give you a ride if you weren't gonna. Oh yeah, I saw that. I saw you posted <laughs> that, and I was like, I drove. I is, is you really driving that long? It's, I mean, it's like a three-hour drive, but it took four because of the traffic. But my car drives mostly by itself on the highway, oh, which is nice. Oh, that's nice. You have a Tesla? No, it has it's just most of these new cars have like a self-driving in the lane. Oh, and nice. We'll just stay in lane, so it's great. Yeah. Um, anyway, so it seems like you have a pretty rich history. You founded numerous companies. Um, and you joined the SEO space in 2002. Your first, I guess, company that you, well, the first company, the first SEO company you founded was when you were in the Dominican Republic? Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Was, uh, what's the name of the company? Yeah, so I founded first uh, Nimedia. It was an affiliate marketing company that I founded in 2002. That was my first one. And I was just building websites, you know, back then I, I like to call myself a reformed black hat, you know. So I used to, to rank high in Google for competitive terms like, you know, uh, Biagra. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that stuff here, but yeah, that's what I, you know, back in the day, you could you could do really well because make a lot of a, money. It was a wild west. Yeah, it was yeah. a wild west. And then Panda and Penguin came and demolished that. No, I'm sure. No, the Panda and Penguin came way later Wait, than that. that. I mean, the demolition the demolition came from uh, the actual regulation in the space that I was in. I chose a space that was a great area. Uh, I left before they passed a law in 2010 that made it all this stuff, you know, illegal. So I got lucky. I, I got out of, in time. And you got, and then you started your own firm um, in in the U.S. in October. No, I I founded the second company, uh, the MediaSoft, which which was had the software uh, RankSense. Yeah. Uh, when I started blogging, you know, in Moss, if you search on my history, in Moss and some other places. I started that in VR and that failed. It was a big failure. It lost a lot of money that I made from the affiliate marketing business. And I learned a lot from that. And, um, and one of the, the, the lessons that I learned was that I was at the wrong place. I had all this stuff right, but trying to launch a software business in the Dominican Republic was not the wisest idea. Right, but after that, when you came to the U.S., you started another firm. Yes, when I, no, when I moved to the U.S., I joined a startup that was doing software because I built a little bit of reputation in SEO with software. They recruited me and I got a really good, you know, uh, position there. Stood there for about a year and a half. Uh, that company called Altruic and they were VC backed and that's one of the, the places where I saw that you could actually get SEO implementation uh -huh. and get some really good results for clients. I left them and I started my agency, my, the, the agency that was the third business, Hamlet Batista Group. Okay, and you, after, I'm curious, so you went from the agency life, you started your own agency, and then you kind of dissolved that slowly and started a company called RankSense. Exactly. And RankSense does what? Yeah, so RankSense, what it does is, it's been a combination of what I was doing in the, in the, in the software that I started in the R that failed, and then I had the, the opportunity to do the implementation on, on Altruic. So the, the RankSense is a combination of both. So RankSense, the first product was analytics, SEO analytics, a lot of the stuff you see right now. And then Altruic was implementation. So now the product that I did on, on the product branches right now is real-time analytics and implementation in Cloudflare. That's what we're doing right now. Okay. So cool. it's like it's been an evolution. And I didn't set out to start an agency. I use it as a, as a stepping stone to fund my software because I always wanted to do the software, but the first attempt failed. 
this is kind of like my second one. Right. And yeah. it seems like you have a passion for taking things that might be routine and kind of automating that process. Exactly. And that's something that I, my company does a lot, not in the SEO space. We build mm. stuff that just could, you can automate or build software packages for and tools to make things much more efficient for the company and for the users using it. That's and it awesome. seems like you, you want to talk a little bit about how you kind of scale SEO through different types of tools. Can you talk a little bit about the passion behind that? Exactly, exactly. So yeah, so a lot of it comes from my background. I'm a, a trained engineer and engineers, we're, we're, pro, we're native problem solvers, right? I don't know if engineering is in your background, but it's, you know, it's like, it's your, it's, it's like your calling. Your calling is you see inefficiency and that bothers you. Yep. That bugs you to see inefficiency. So you're driven to, I can't see, I can't stand this. I need to fix it. Right. And that's your drive, you yeah. know, that's your, 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 and everybody has a different calling. That's our calling is to fix stuff that we see inefficient. Right. And, and I think the best way to learn to fix stuff that is actually worth it, because another problem with being an engineer, engineer is that you might end up doing things that are worthless, that is only in your mind that it's a problem, but right. it's not a real problem. But if you are feeling the problem yourself, you are getting into the weeds, running an agency, doing affiliate marketing, doing, you know, talking to, living the life of the clients or the users of your, of your, of your technology, you face real problems and you say, wow, I can't stand this stuff, but let me fix it. Right, that's interesting because it's so ingrained in my life because if I, go, I have a process, when I walk into my house, I will do certain things on that level of the house before I go up to the next level because it's not efficient to come back go back downstairs later. And my wife can't stand it. She thinks I'm crazy. <laughs> I'm like, no, we were down there. We're taking care of that now. And then we're going to move up to the next level and take care of stuff. Let there. me tell you, let me tell you the story <laughs> of my kids, right? Yeah. I have two kids and they're, they're teenagers. So the youngest, Joshua, he's like me. And I see a, a, a little Hamlet and, I, and, and he's so organized for efficiency. Right. He loves video games. He go to his bed and he is, you know, he comes in Oh, you have to do your homework before you start playing the games. Yeah. Oh, and then he's like looking at how much time he's spending doing the homework. And then by the time he goes to bed, he has a very little time. So what he did, he said, okay, I'm going to fix it. So you know what? He comes to, he comes to, and he, where's your, I already did the homework. What do you mean you, well, your shoes can't, got here. How do you do the homework? Shoes, he could work he, so, that, so that he could get to play. What, how do you do the homework? Oh, I did it on the bus. Yeah, smart, smart. And like, the kid, how old is the kid? He's uh, 13. That's smart. That's very good. Everything's Great. about efficiency. If you could optimize it, one thing we don't have more to, more of in this world is time. Exactly. And that's why I mean, so I mean, give me examples of stuff you've built to help you know your agency or other agencies, um, like like a small little thing. And obviously, Rank Sense is a big software platform, but so like, a lot idea? of it is a lot of stuff that I've been sharing is you know, and you could think about, for example, URL URL uh, mappings. Right. Right. That's a big thing that you know anybody on SEO has to be doing all the migrations, broken link building. Finding content gaps, right? Rewriting titles to optimize, you know, generating meta descriptions, generating image te alt text and captions. Right. And you think about all that stuff. It's a lot of work. It's yeah. really tedious, and a lot of people don't even realize that when you actually put the time to do that work, it drives results. And I think you know, John Mueller has mentioned that some really basic things people don't even do because they're chasing the Chinese stuff, and that actually drives makes a difference right so but people don't do it because it's a lot of work yeah right that's mm -hmm. awesome even the way I personally write it's like I find ways to make it more efficient in terms of how I find content how I do stuff like that so how would people who have I do something like on a day-to-day -day basis and they're like this is just the most tedious stuff I have to do I don't want to do it how would they get in how would they get involved in this and how would they actually go ahead and figure out solutions to kind of automate their processes so yeah so so I, I, I love the idea of taking baby steps right don't try to become a programmer, you know, or a data scientist from scratch, or trying to go through, you know, uh, or or even sign up at a, in college to become, you know, a professional just to be able to do that stuff, right? right? And the other thing is, you could hire people, right? You could hire, you know, a developer to do this or that, right? That could be even an, an easier step, right? And learn to communicate because there is a skill needed in translating what you're doing into something a developer will be able to do. If you try to do that, a lot of people fail even at that level. Where they don't even know how to explain things that somebody could, could, could take. So start by taking stuff that you're doing all the time and document it. And learn to write pseudocode, right? How would I try to describe this so a machine could do it so that you could take that pseudocode and hire a developer say, look, do this. That's, that requires skill. So you could start with that. 
And then you said, if part of the work, you could automate it with simple tools like Excel and functions and stuff like that, then take that next step and do it with, with, with sheets, Excel, the functions, do that stuff. And then you're gonna hit some roadblocks. And you said, you know, wow, you know, I can get up to this point and I can get past that. And then you're gonna say, wow, now let me learn a little bit of Python because I hit these roadblocks. I already completed these steps. I'm already know why I need to learn this advanced skill. Right. And now you say, okay, wow, let me, let me learn a little bit of Python. Let me learn a little bit of data science so I can take this further but because I already hit the limits. Right. Right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I love it when you could, I always tell people to come to me and they have a brand new idea. I'm like, put it in an Excel spreadsheet first or a Google sheet first. And they struggle. And, they, if, if they, and if they don't struggle, that can be kind of turned into something that works in, in a software program product. Exactly. Um, so it's always interesting to see that. And, yeah, that's and the other benefit of that is that developers, they don't have our domain expertise. Yeah. They wouldn't be able to solve the problems. That's the other thing that I, that I like people to understand is, they say, oh, no, I just hire people that to do it. Yeah. They're not going to make the connections right. unless they, they have the, your domain expertise. And you're not going to make the connections unless you know a little bit of what's possible. So that's why it's also important to learn that. Cool. I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me about this topic. Absolutely. Can you tell people how they could learn more about you, follow you, and so forth? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much for the opportunity. So you can follow me on Twitter, Hamley Batista. And if you want to check, check out my website, ranksense.com. And we have a, an app in, uh, in Cloudflare that you can check out as well to help you speed up SEO implementations. Cool. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me.